Let's turn to Romans chapter 4 from verse 14 to verse 16. It says, for if they which are of the law, uh, let me repeat that, for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise of none effect, because the law worketh wrath. Where no law is, there is no transgression. Now, verse 16 is where I'm going. It says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. It is of faith that it might be by grace. So the end that the promise might be sure to all of the seed, not only to that which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. All right, so it says, therefore it is of faith, I'll put that scripture, that it might be by grace to the end, the promise may be sure to all the seed. So what God is saying here is that in order for the promise to certainly come to pass, in the lives of the people he made the promise to, he therefore says, it is of faith, let's read it back, verse 16, that it might be by grace to the end or to this purpose that the promise might be sure, the word sure them in certain to all the seed. So this evening I want to share briefly on the subject of the role that grace and what it actually does as we operate in faith. I mean, it tells us in Romans 5, the scripture just came to me, verse 1, it says, being justified, or right, by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. So by faith, we have access into this grace. It is of faith that you might have access to grace. And once grace is what is responsible for the fulfillment of of the promise, then it is certain and it is sure that it will happen, all right, uh, in the life of that particular person. Now, if we read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 to verse 16, it then tells us, let us hold fast, seeing that we have a great high priest, let us hold fast our profession. Now, that word profession comes from the word saying the same thing as. That's what it means. Let us hold fast to saying the same thing as God. That is, the Bible says in Hebrews 13, verse 5, the Lord has said, I will never leave nor forsake thee, in verse 6, that I may boldly say, now, that's the profession. In other words, God says that you may boldly say. So he tells us, let us hold fast to boldly saying what God has said to us. Next verse, it says, for we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Now, let me just use the scripture to further elaborate that. Hebrews 10, verse 22, verse 23. Hebrews 10, 23. It talks about convert. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Now you see this here. Without wavering, for faithful is he that promised. So he's saying, hold fast, saying into your own life, 
what God has said to you, which is the promise that he made to you without wavering. For faithful is he that has promised you. So, it's talking about a confession. All right, thank you. All right, all right. so let's go back to, to the scripture there in, in um, Hebrews 14. Hebrews 4 verse 15 now. So it says, For we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, which is inability to produce results, which is limitations. For he was at all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Now, as the temptation comes, we are holding fast to our confession. We are holding fast to our proclamation. Now, let me tell you the truth about human nature. No matter what you preach, all right, to us human beings, when we set out on any project, we set out on it by our own power and might. Even if God tells something, you, you, you depend on your willpower on, and, and you are doing that, until something happens. Now, this is how it is. Something happens, and then it is either you change gear to grace, or you come out with the conclusion that God is unfaithful or you are hot. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, let me show you what this means. You look at what it says in Isaiah 40. About they that wait upon the Lord. All right? It says, he giveth power, verse 29, to the faint. He gives power to who? Okay, who is the faint? All right? Now, if you start running a race, and you start, okay, 5,000 meters, you take off with speed. After you do 600 meters, you start panting. Isn't that what you call faint? Do you get what I'm saying? So he doesn't give power until you are tired. Do you get what I'm saying? Because you will be like Peter who will say that I can do it. Because there's a tendency in us to, to we, you know, to, it's just in human nature to say how brilliant we were. Are, are you following what I'm saying here? God, you, look, listen to this. It will amount to madness to take the glory to yourself after God has processed you to get something done. In other words, you will have tried everything you know and then got into the place where you have given up. Then he shows up so that when it's time to, you will know that it is God. Because or else, you will just say God, but you pack God at one side and you'll be talking about your brilliance and your strategy. Are uh, you following what I'm saying? All right? Now. So he gives the power to the faint and to them that have no what? Might. He does what? Increases their what? Strength. Please, get this up because it's a real principle in life. He says, let the lame foot be healed rather than being turned out of the way. Now, look at the next verse. Even the youth shall do what? Faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, in other words, is after you have fainted and you have fallen, that you now come and wait upon the Lord so that he renews your what? Strength. Do you get what I'm saying? That's how it happens. All right? That's when you're now ready. I mean, they'll tell anybody who is a lifesaver and the same thing, you want to save a person? That's why God gave the law. That's because without the law, man will have thought in his heart. Man will have thought in his heart that, you know, you know, I, I don't need a savior. So he gave him the law. So through the law, as you struggle, 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 then you come. The Bible says through it came the knowledge of sin. You now know that you need a savior. Because people that are drowning, they say when people fall man, they're drowning, they don't go and save them at the beginning. All right? They wait until you're about to take the last gasp and you have lost all your strength. So you are just like this. Then they come and carry you. you, you, know, uh, you, 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 you 
whatever they say, you just you, uh, put your leg here. You, uh, but <laughs> uh, do you get what I'm saying? Uh, a friend of mine who's a medical doctor, he told me when he was in Luth, when he was, he was training in Luth, he said, he said, you see massive big men when they are injured, be so, they, no matter what you tell them, they'll do it. That when they be, uh, doctor, what should I do? What should I do? All right, put your leg here. Uh, put it, that people that are under normal circumstances, well, you talk to them, who are you? Rather, but once the trouble is beyond them, then anything instruction you give them, they take it. So, shall faint and the young men. So it says, let us come up to the throne of grace. When do you come up to the throne of grace? You are holding fast your confession. You have felt that you are two steps away from the realization. You take that one strategic step. Do you get what I'm saying? You send that email. You make that phone call. And it's like something you are not expecting to cover hits you and your whole concept of faith collapses. Do you get what I'm saying here? Where what you understand, as far as you are concerned, about faith has gone. That's why Jesus told Peter, is when you are converted, go and strengthen the brethren. God does not call anybody into ministry on the basis of your brilliance, but on the basis of your weakness. That is, to shepherd people, that when somebody sits down with you and talks about their weakness, you can identify with what they are saying because of what you have gone through. Are you following what I'm saying? No, I look up and say, what are you talking about? What do you say? What are you talking about? What do you say? I can't be discouraged. The Bible says, tell my, oh boy. <laughs> Where, when the person comes to meet you, you have finished preaching on joy. But the person walks up to you and tells you that, listen, listen, something, and it's almost like, oh, what you said on Sunday, you said it. But let me tell you what I am feeling. And you can identify with what person. Do you get what I'm saying here? And there's compassion. That's what compassion is. Because you, can, because you have been in situations where the pressure was beyond you. And it says it is at that point that you don't give up. Let the lame foot. It says strengthen the feeble knees and, and, and the hands that hang down. Lift them up. Go to God at this point, and what God is going to do is that He is going to release grace. Wherefore, lift up the hands that hang down and the feeble knees. All right, go up to God there, and God is going to bring the grace for the fulfillment of the very thing that you have been declaring. And that's why I said that God always sets people aside after their first testimony, so that self-confidence can die down. So it takes Moses and says, I'm going to break you in the wilderness. It takes David, and before you tell me about how anointed you are, you, I'm sending you to the cave there, uh, where you are talking about how smart you are, well, the soul that promoted you. I'm going to confuse you now. The soul starts throwing spears, I want to kill you. He says, so why did you bring me here to kill me? And then you run into the cave and he sends people to you that you look at it and say, this is a hopeless situation. What he is doing is that he is causing you to learn how to depend on grace. As Pastor Adipa said, listen, if you send somebody out to go and start a church, I said, sir, tell me who is likely to fail. He said, the most brilliant person. You get what I'm saying? Which means the person that doesn't depend on, that's what happens there. Where you are, I, I, mean, I mean, if you enter into any room in a discussion, the one person who is the loudest and talking the most and wants everybody to know what they know, put that person out to the test, they will fail. Because people that succeed in this thing are listeners. All right? So it tells us, let us come up to the throne of grace. So let me say this here. If you had a faith project, all right, and you apply for this, or you, and you maybe, maybe you, you, you applied uh, uh, for a visa, and then they rejected you, and you, you now folded the whole thing up and said that, well, you know, it, it's not working and all of that. 
That's the point where the journey starts. Are you following what I'm saying? That's the point where the journey starts. The journey of grace now leading you to the fulfillment of that particular promise. So it's at that place of weakness because he gives power to them that have no mind. And it will be something that God will look at you in future if you now forget where you came from. Which is why every time you thank God, you need to go back and thank God about places where you came from where you thought that, listen, you will never be in this space and be in this position. Where God lifted you, you have to go into those things so that you don't forget. Because it's easy for the human nature to forget. So grace is therefore released, all right, that the promise might be fulfilled. Now, someone explain what this grace does. Romans and chapter 4. What shall we say then? Uh, listen very well to this. All right, because when people struggle with this in the New Testament, uh, today I'm, I'm really teaching. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by his works, he, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. In other words, if Abraham got it done by his own works, then Abraham can now boast, all right, before God and boast and all of that. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him... That worketh is a reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So, if you work for me for 10 hours, I agree to pay you 100,000, and I pay you 100,000, I've not showed any favor to you. Do you get what I'm saying? Because I'm indebted to you after you put that work in. But if I see you and I give you 100,000, that is grace. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. To him that worketh not, all right, but now to him that worketh is a reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted unto him for righteousness. All right. So let's read it again from verse 2. For if Abraham were justified by works, he has way off to glory, but not before God. For what said the scripture? All right, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, go to James. James chapter 2. It wasn't by works, Abby. Isn't that so? Okay. 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 Verse 21. Let's all read it together. So, so, the, so the confusion is there. Was not Abraham our father justified by what? By what now? By works, have you? When he offered his Isaac, his son, upon the altar, sayest thou, how faith with his works, and by works was his faith made perfect. And, verse 23, the scripture was fulfilled. Stop there. And the scripture was what? Scripture was fulfilled that Abraham did what? Believed God. How was it fulfilled? By works, Abi? Isn't that what it says? Ah, you are now quiet. Isn't that what it says? Yes. So you have to read this one too. So let us read Romans 4 2. Now let's go. For Romans 4 2. For if Abraham was justified by works. But what did James say? He was justified by what? What did James say? What did Paul say? 
So if you went for James seminar <laughs> on faith, and you went for Paul seminar on faith, you come out what? Confused. So sometimes when you're confused, the preachers are not wrong. Or we are saying James and Paul. This Sunday, Paul can preach justification by works. In September, justification by faith only. There you call pastor. <laughs> but you said. Now, so what is he saying? Because this looks like what? Confusion. And God is not an author of confusion. And this is where the grace, faith, and works, people miss it. The works that Abraham did was to carry his only son and put him on the altar and bring out a knife and say, I'm going to kill this boy. And said, I know that God will raise him back after I've killed him. Which human being has ever done that in their life? It takes grace to do those works. Are you following what I'm saying? There are works you do by yourself. There are works you do through grace. If the walls of Jericho were there and Joshua sat down and said, Guys, let us bring down the walls of Jericho. You move from this direction. You move from this direction. You move here with horses and there will fire. That's his works. The works that grace produces is take a ram's horn, blow it, go around seven times. Do you get what I'm saying here? And the walls will fall flat. There is that which grace will teach you to do. There is that which your own human intelligence teaches you to do. So when somebody says, by the grace of God, this company will be worth 10 billion in the next two years, what that person is saying, by the works grace will give me to do. What did Paul say? I labored more than you all. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was inside me. But the grace of God, I am what I am. For by his grace that was bestowed was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than you all. Yet not I, but grace of God that was with me. In other words, the labor you are seeing was a product of grace. And there is no labor that grace asks you to do, or grace will cause you to do, that will not produce instantaneous results. So there is labor outside the veil. There is labor within the veil. Do you get what I'm saying here? Now what faith does is that it takes you and you have access to this grace. In other words, your confession that you have been making. Now you know what caused the frustration? What caused the frustration was you are making the confession but you are doing the works that you know. Do you, are you following what I'm saying there? When you tried it and tried it, and because God, that's why he says, you will run upon the mountains and those that run, will be, you will flee upon the mountains, they, those that pursue will be many, until you be left as an ensign. In other words, a luta continue, you continue until you say, I am tired. <laughs> My brother told me a story in a secondary school, it was a boarding house, in government college band, and two people started fighting. And they thought, you know, you start the fight, and other people were around watching them and they felt that they would come and separate them <laughs> but they left them and those ones were just cheating and they were fighting they fought to the point that <laughs> I was saying to you about the he said Elawa Otirewa Edenwowa Elawa in other words separate us you are just watching 
we are tired. That's God will leave you unto you. Are you following what I'm saying? You say you know how to do it, go and do it. But when you are tired, call upon me. Do you get what I'm saying here? When you have tried, which means that you try, you try, you try, all right, you try, uh, you say, well, I'm telling you, I heard from God. That's what you said. It could be your mind speaking to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Anybody that talks too much about the head from God, God didn't say anything to them. <laughs> Anybody you hear talking to you about how much they hear from God, that you are intimidated, they are not hearing anything. Do you get what I'm saying? When new people, when we were in school, who got saved, they were dating, they were unbelievers, they got saved, they are married to today. We know those who are specialist intercessors, who when they came to testify about their relationship, said, and as they were saying, we were looking at this person, I just picked up, I picked up, before I met him, before I met him, um, the Lord had given me a name. A name. And you know, you know, I, I, I just couldn't because, because, you know, naturally from our family, we don't, <laughs> you know, we don't do this, but, but the Holy Ghost just dropped this name. This name in me. And, and he, I, you know, I, I was praying that morning and just kept saying, shh, shh, shh. And, and, and pastor was preaching. And, and then he gave an example and said, Shle, and I knew that was the name. <laughs> Before that session, before we finish that, the relationship has scattered. <laughs> uh, what God is trying to tell you is, is your mind. Are you following what I'm saying here? Look, you grow into this thing. So you test it. The Bible says those who by reason of use, who by reason of practice can now discern. In other words, you, that's why we say don't, don't, don't go and don't go and make heavy decisions on, on if you're not sure. I, and the truth about the matter is that if God is speaking to you clearly about things and he knows that you don't have that maturity level concerning that particular thing, he will use things like messages to confirm it to you. People will come and teach and open up scriptures you didn't know. And bam, you say, that's the scripture now. That confirms what I heard. But you are quiet about it. You know what I'm saying? God called me, I'm a prophet. All those things. All right? So, you start your confession. You try stuff, try stuff, try stuff. Uh, it doesn't work. I'm going somewhere here. And then when you, all right, now those who have experienced and have experienced, what they will do is just start confessing. And what they will do is they won't mention it to anybody. And they're confessing knowing that their confession is to take them into the throne of grace that they might find grace to help them in that time of need. So they wait upon the Lord from the beginning as Jesus told them it was after all of them had denied Jesus and run away that they could obey that instruction. When he was telling them before to come and pray, they were sleeping. But after they saw themselves, because everybody wasn't just Peter, everybody took off. After they all took off and saw their own humanity and their own weakness and helplessness, they now said, Jesus said, tarry. And they did what? Tarry. So he gives you something and you stay there and you tarry. Now, what will this grace do? Let's bring it to a close here. All right. So, Romans chapter 11. Verse 5. Even so, then at this present time also, there is a remnant 
according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more what? Works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it's no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election hath obtained it, and the rest were what? Blinded. Do you see it there? Whatever you are seeking for, God has to open your eyes to see it. So the works, when grace comes, what grace does, it opens your eyes. Do you get what I'm saying? There are people that are doing works with closed eyes. So what they're doing is groping in darkness. It is just trial by error, game of chance, which means, you know, we're just trying, 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 and they're trying many things and trying many things, but their eyes have not been opened. So when a person says that by the grace of God, we'll make 10 billion in four years, he's saying God will open our eyes to what to do to get it. So he gets the promise of God, puts the promise of God on their lips, calling it into existence as though it were, and then they come up to the throne of grace that let grace be released into my heart that my eyes might do what? See. What do we mean by this? Genesis chapter 19 and verse 11. Verse 10. But the men, now these are the men that came in, all right, this, uh, sorry, these are the angels that came and during the time of Lord Sodom and Gomorrah, so, I mean, so you, all the people came to the house and they wanted to take the men. But they thought they were normal men. They didn't know they were angels with superior ability. Verse 10. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house all right, to them, and shut the what? The door to protect Lot and his family. Verse 11. And they smote the men that were at the... Where were they? No, wait, wait. Were they at the house or at the door? No, no, no. Because if you're at the house, you can be in the compound. Listen, are they at the house or at the door? They smote the men that were at the door with blindness both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. It is not activity. It is doing the right thing. Do you get what I'm saying here? Why did the young men fit and get weary? Because they, were, they didn't know where the door... Do you get what I'm saying? That means their eyes were closed. Why were they struggling and doing all that? Because their eyes are closed. Why would somebody believe God for something? Because what you need to do, the eyes. When grace comes in, grace opens those eyes. And when the eyes are open, what did God say this Isaiah for you? He said, Who is as blind as my messenger that I sent? Says, This is my messenger that I gave my message to. Who is as blind as the messengers? That I said, so he sent them, but they didn't know how to do what he said. Look at Isaiah 42 here. That's why someone said, and it's very right, and I put it out there. I mean, reason for failure is hubris. Reason for failure is hubris. Hubris means, all right, is that pride where there's overestimation of your own self. And that's why God allows you to fail. I mean, we hide. I mean, evangelicals used to teach this, but because I don't teach it, it's victory to victory. But nobody's having victory to victory. One of the biggest lessons God gives to us is causing people to fail. I'll never forget what Barack Obama, President Barack Obama said. I'll never forget it. I studied that. I, listen to me. 
For almost four or five years of my life, I will wake up from 12 midnight to 4 a.m. watching American news. I understood their, dom their democratic process. President Obama, I, there's nothing, I don't, I don't think there's any documentary that they did on him I didn't buy. I bought everything. People that followed him from the beginning to the end. One time I was in Baba's shop, they went for their, what they would call this, this delegates thing. So they were doing it state by state. So they went to Iowa and they won. And Iowa was 93% or 95% Caucasians, white people. And the understanding is this, to the democratic establishment. If you can go to Iowa and you can win in Iowa, the promise they gave to him was that the establishment said, we'll turn around from Hillary Clinton and back you. Show as a black man you can win in a white place. He went there and won. When he won, he said the people that were going with him already thought they had won the whole thing. The, the data coming out of the next one, which was New Hampshire, was that they also were going to win. He said, shockingly, he like had the conversation somewhere. She broke down. She said something. And the whole of New Hampshire turned around and followed her. They lost. He said, that loss cured my people. He said, we're all depressed that day. But it helped us from hubris. He said, that is how I became president. Because from then on, nobody took anything for granted. All right? When there's hubris, which means that you have this sense of super feeling that you can all of that, what happens is you're going to life. And life teaches you some very painful lessons. And it's pain. Listen, listen, listen. If, if, if you do the, old, I mean, the man with the most successful cable news program in America today said, I've only learned through two things, ways. I've only learned, not acquire knowledge. There's a difference between acquiring knowledge and learning. You can acquire knowledge about how to fly a plane, but you can learn how to fly a plane. Do you get what I'm saying here? You can know more than, I mean, if a young guy sits with his father and the father just shows him how to fly and says presence and he's following his father and he's following that, he doesn't understand the physics, but he, after some time he gets it and begins to fly. You can go to school and learn the physics. But if they put you in the plane, if they carry you and they tell you that the pilot has collapsed, you will be, with all your knowledge of physics, you will be shaking and sweating. You won't even know what to press, but you can sit down with that guy and lecture him on the principles. And this was confusing many people. They will lecture people on the principles of business. But it doesn't mean the market woman they doesn't know how to do deals more than you. Are you, are you following me? To learn, you put things into practice. You test things. So when you go out there and you are put in and you begin and you get to a place where you are stuck, things don't work the way they thought they will work, and it happens to everybody. Are you following here? It ha look, it's people that don't know how to do When we, Look, we do community groups here. Many people join community groups all over the whole world and everything. The people join, packed out 20-something thousand. Listen, when we started, it was sell. But you see, when people don't know how to do things, they don't know how results come, they think that, that at the first attempt at something, you will get it. And that, and that if you don't get it, then maybe God didn't send you. This is why we don't expose people to challenges that we face. Because if we expose them, they'll say God is not with us. Not knowing that that is the way you learn. I, we tried it, the thing didn't come out the way we were. We said one night something percent, it's something we failed. We got 20, 22 percent, it wasn't working. I said this thing. I went back, started studying, reading. I stumbled on information somewhere. And the man said, listen, we failed also when we started our cell system. And then he broke it down and I saw it. He said, look, he said, when you enter a house, he said, then I understood the architecture of our houses. You have the lobby. Not the lobby, sorry. You have the foyer, which means people can just come in, all right, and stay there. Then you have the living room, and then you have the bedroom or kitchen, which are private areas. And he says, a stranger can come in, and you can put the stranger in the foyer. Somebody that you know fairly well can go to the living room. 
But it's only people that you really know very well that can do bedroom. Now, there are people who, if they come to your house and sit down in the living room, and now call you and say, please, can you come and make coffee? I, I, I like to have you say, what's rubbish? My friend, I'm going to go to the something that you've been attending me again. What, what kind of nonsense is that? I, I should come and be taking coke for you in the fridge. Will you go and take it by yourself? Why? Because they have access. Do you, you, you get what I'm saying? There are some people who they enter your house and go straight to the kitchen. That's the last day. Or they're coming to the bedroom. That's the last day. So the teaching there was you can't take people who are strangers into that cell system straight. Create a gap. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so I said, what gap can we create before we get to sell? Let's call it community groups. Let's look for what to bring people together, uh, their careers. We look at, and then we build the community groups so that people can become friends. Then from friends, they can form cells. But we failed first. Do you get what I'm saying here? And then you go up to the throne of grace. Do you get what I'm saying? Because what you have seen is in the word of God. Then grace comes and opens your eyes. But look, it is hard for the human nature. Without touching failure to humble themselves. Are you following what I'm saying? And let me tell you the worst faith well gamble. After circumstances have shown you, oh boy, oh boy, this thing is not working, then you should. Because um, this is a true story. It's a very true story. The person who I was saying, I picked up, I picked up in a birthday party, is a real true story. Now, the names are not real, but it happened. And after it happened, the, it was a fellowship somewhere. I went, the leader, vice president of the fellowship, came out to see me, shook me, said, ah, look at what this lady said. When she introduced me to the guy, he said, man, what I wanted to say was, I hope you know what you're getting yourself into. Because there's a problem anytime a man and a woman are giving testimony and the woman collects the microphone to explain it properly. <laughs> <laughs> Abi, say, bring the microphone, you're not, you're not. This is not how God moved. Let me explain it properly. <laughs> and then the man is doing like this. That, and his relationship married, that's the end. Anybody can see that that's the end. All right? Or the woman is in, I'm praying in tongues as though this man will talk. So she said, this is what I'm talking about, 1988, 89. I said that. Now, just for you to know, this individual who was vice president, who became almost, if not at some point, all right, the resident pastor, of House on the Rock. So, if myself and that type of person, all right, if you have those kind of two people in your life, and you are making a decision, and we both know that this thing is a problem, as far as God is concerned, eh? He has spoken to you. It's just that you don't have respect for the people in authority around you. So next time when you say, which I've heard from heaven, you talk to people that have been in the business before you. Say, look, this is what I heard. This is what I heard. What do you think? And I'll tell you, let's pray about it. All right? And, and if they say, let's pray about it, and they don't come back to tell you that, to confirm it, just know that they don't know how to tell you. <laughs> because leaders can have weakness that they can't sit down and say, how are we going to tell this person that you have missed the road? Look, there's somebody that got married here inside this church. One of the first people that got married. See, we married. As we, one of my sisters, as, we, as I announced the wedding, one of the ministers, the minister now in church just walked up to me and said, Pastor, stop that wedding now. I said, what are you saying? I said, we announced wedding. He says, how do you want me to go and stop it? Say, ah, this guy, she was your friend and say, yes. He's going to enter trouble. I know this lady, I said for what? And she went on. I said, but why didn't you say when you were seeing them come together to church? Say, I thought it was his sister. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He thought they said that I just assumed. Ah! Do you know that? Of course, the marriage has. I don't think that marriage lasted. For all intents and purposes, the marriage died maybe the next day of the or within three weeks. Ah, they said they came and she she entered his car 
poured petrol, lit the car, and wrote a suicidal note that he killed her. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I'm just telling you that when that person was saying it, it's why I can't say what she said, but what she said to me played out as it was. Do you get what I'm saying? So, you know, sometimes you say it's envy. It may not be envy. Uh, you say I found somebody. Your friends are not talking. They say they're envious. They're envious. They may not be envious. So maybe there's something they know they are not just saying. I have seen things. I've done marriage. We've done marriage here. Yeah. The man met the woman. I'm just saying this. Maybe somebody needs to hear. I asked him, I said, so why are you dating? Why am I? He said, We've, I've always dreamed to be like the Copeland. I'll be like Kenneth because I have a teaching ministry. She'll be like Gloria. We'll be Gloria. I said, so what happened? Listen, I'm t- this I'm true. He said, I went back. They, they were in a particular university, okay? And she was like one of the village evangelism people. She used to preach heavily. So I just felt that she had that calling. So we came together. See, I was sitting in my office one day. The lady just came in. That, I won't say what she said. She was like, blah, blah, blah. next thing she left. I said, okay, okay, I'll talk to you. Next thing, about 10 minutes after, the guy ran in, blah, 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 with his friend, where is she, where is she, where? She's come to report me. Then he started the story. How they were here about there. She slapped him in front. And listen, and he was running. She was, this is, <laughs> now, it was so bad. It was so bad. I'm just trying to tell you something. That he took her to the father. This to the father in the hometown that, look, I have a problem with your daughter. He said, look, since she's been a child, we think a demon entered her. Ah. The father was saying this. And this problem we have been having. So when you came, we just... <laughs> this, I am saying, is exactly what happened. So we released her to you. That look, <laughs> If you can find a solution, <laughs> all this year, I'm, I'm not, this is I'm not, but they felt it in their spirit. Listen, are you following me here? So look, don't let emotions cloud. Are you following me? Okay. And the truth about the matter is this. Look, they don't want to make a decision. I, I, I told him at my house, my father just came to see me and he doesn't talk. He just said, is this what you want to do? I said, yes. 6 a.m. he woke me up. He said, is this what you want to do? He said, yes. He said, I can't stop you from making a decision. But just understand this. I told you one, two, three, four. The consequence of this may happen in your life after I'm gone. But remember, I told you. That's the end. There's no, there's no I heard from anything, anything. End, finish. Matter, closed. Because for a man who has not spoken like that all my life, to come and wake me up at 6 a.m., God is talking to you. He said, I can't care what you know. When trouble starts. And the problem is that when the trouble starts, it's these same people you go and give the trouble to. When they finish dealing, you run back to the house and be sleeping inside the house, eating food again. After all the labor that they have done, you are back again to the same room, putting in trouble. What they thought that we should be enjoying our life now. Do you get what I'm saying? Stubbornness doesn't pay. All right? And before you make big mistakes, God will have shown you small, 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 small mistakes. So once you see small, just know that this thing, I may not know it as I should. Let me begin to test this thing properly before I go and make a decision that can be irreversible. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your word. I ask that you establish us in this truth, expand it within our consciousness. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. All right, don't forget 7, 8, uh, I'm on time. I, I'm, I'm on time. Abby? Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> 7 a.m. Um, on Saturday. All right. Uh, please do read. We're going to say some very strong things there. All right, then. Yes, 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 yes. I said, because um, well, I, I mean, I got it by revelation to have a joy meeting with Pastor Nathan and Bassi. So I told him. And so we found a date, 21st of August, Sunday. All right? Be there. Yes, sir. All right. God bless you.
Are you yearning for a unique spiritual experience and would like to have a deeper connection with God? Are you looking to be a part of a strong faith community? Do you want more from life or do you feel an emptiness that is sucking the life out of you? The Covenant Nation is opening an all-nation worship center in central London. Yes, you heard right. Central London. If you live in or around the city of London and its environs, this church is for you. Come join this family as we open up at the Odeon Cinema, 30 Tottenham Court Road, London W1T 1BX on Sunday, August 14th, 2022 at 9 a.m. Register for updates, events and the inaugural service using this link or scan the barcode. We have a seat just reserved for you. Hi there, my name is Edmond Didukoko and I'm privileged to be a minister at the Covenant Nation. I pastor the Maryland campus and um, I'd like to just speak briefly about my experience at ICPMLW. I have been part of all of the additions since inception and I'd like to say that the ICPMLW is one of the most strategic spiritual events in the course of my growth as a believer. The Bible actually says that all scripture is God breathed, it's given for instruction, for reproof, for correction, and that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished. ICPMLW for me has been my route to being thoroughly furnished as a believer because it's a confluence of different anointings. And in that meeting, you find that you learn all that you need to know. You get inspired, you get instructed, and you're ready for the next phase of your life as a believer. So this year, I'd like to invite you from the 3rd year to the 3rd of September. Don't miss ICPMLW. It's going to be an amazing experience with God and your life would never remain the same. God bless you. Bonamor.